Collectors and welcome to the month of May. Uh, lovely to have you here. If you're new, welcome and if you've come back, thank you. <laughs> um, so May, what have I been doing? I did do, as I talked about, I did do my accounts and it took a little bit longer than I expected. I had a little bit of a chat with my accountant and there was a bit of a misunderstanding that they had wanted me to do it all digitally this year and um, I hadn't because I know that the um, date, this is only in the UK, the date for the taxes when they have to be put in digitally is has moved to 2026. So I thought, oh, that's fine. I don't have to get to grips with the difficult cash flow system that they have. <laughs> um, but I kind of, I've done all this. I'm going to see what they say. So I've done it all paper wise. Um, and I'm going to see what they say and see what they put in. And then I might just do it myself for the next few years if there's not too much that they have to change I don't know because I feel I kind of coped with it all right I record everything it's really easy to uh, get all your figures together it just takes time like I said so that's going to go in I'm going to take that over um I've done these two little um Beatrice and Bonnie or Bonnie and Beatrice I don't know which way around they are um so this they are the designs for my next kit so um, I've done them and then I had to do my accounts and now I can go back to them kind of I'm in between a video with these cheap kits that um, I talked about I'm just doing this one at the moment which is the unicorn um, so Bonnie and Beatrice really looking forward to doing the PDF because I have to do a PDF for inside the kit and then I'll do a video and I'm really debating whether this video goes onto my channel for everybody to see but you can understand as soon as I do that Everyone can just make it themselves and there's no reason for them to buy the kit. But there are people out there that might see it and then buy the kit. So you see how that's a, a shall I do it, shan't I? Do I make the video private just for people that buy the kit or do I put it out there? I have, I think I have a feeling that I might just put it out there because my other two kits are out there anyway. And it's a lovely little rabbit and it'll be a popular video. So that video can make a little bit of money for itself anyway. So yeah, I'm doing these cheap kits and this is the one where I've, um, you may have seen it already, but I really had it fully planned out that this was going to be the beginner needle felter struggle is real. You know, cheap kits on Amazon aren't very good. And I bought the kits and they're really good. <laughs> so I was really shocked and they've got polystyrene balls in them. And yes, okay, no laughing at my sheep. My sheep legs are awful. But look at him. Let's see if I can get him close. I just love the hedgehog. He's really cute and it was really enjoyable. And this is the horse that I'm doing at the moment. And you get the unicorn horn all done for you. So that's really clever. But anyway, so I'm just doing that at the moment. So also we went to see um, the dogs that I've got. Their mum has had puppies again. So I've got a, a full length puppy video for my dog channel to do. Um, so yeah just got lots of little bits of footage but the bluebells are out it's a sunny week this week so it's really lovely we had the coronation which you would have seen luckily the weather was good for that um so it's sort of quite busy I think I have definitely got into Holmfirth Art Week I thought I had to submit two things and then they would decide but they've just sent me an email saying looking forward to seeing you on the Sunday where you drop off your items so I think I've got in, but I'm going to do one more sheep to match. Um, I'm going to put this one in and then I'm going to do one more sort of in a more matching colour because I've got the valet up there, which I could have put in. But when you put them together, I don't know, they just I'm just not happy with them as a pair. So I'm going to do this one and one more. So lots to do this week. Um, we've got Maths GCSE on Friday, the first paper. Anyone who does do any home education, I really recommend getting if you can afford it and it's really hard and we only had a tutor for the last sort of six months but a tutor that marks papers really helps because <laughs> they know what the what the um, examiners are looking for so but yes yeah, so we've got GCSE on Friday my son is having lots of exams he's got his driving test coming up so again we've got quite a lot going on but um, it looks like the weather has turned and it's it's lovely weather out there so let's crack on I put up my pictures on the wall really pleased with them Love being able to put pictures up with those um, commando strips just makes life so much easier and it just frees up a bit of room and it also gives me a bit more space for more pictures <laughs> but yeah really 
pleased with putting them up. I do love that little Herdwick. So I've finished um, this sheep on the end and really, really happy with him or her, probably her. But yeah, so I'm just, um, I'm not going to show you me because I look a mess today so you can look at the sheep. I'm just pricing it up for Etsy and it always shocks me whether the amount I put it on for is right. So I've gone through it. So if I put it on at 130, which is 130 pounds, which is an awful lot, but let me break that down. So Etsy costs are... £22.10, I work them out, they're about 16 to 17% when you actually work it all out with your end of year figures. Then postage, if I base it on UK, that's £7 something tracked and insured, it'd probably be a bit more. And so I've rounded that to 10 with the box costs and things like that. The wool itself cost me £18 because it was quite an expensive um, way to make it, but I think it's a really good effect. Then the rest of the materials probably cost me five pounds, not much more, I don't think anyway. So that comes, if you take that off the 130, all those costs, that's 74 pounds 90. And then he took me, or she took me at least eight hours, so that's nine pounds 36 an hour and the minimum wage has just gone up to ten pounds eighteen and i ha I am happy with I'm pretty happy with that you know should I be putting it on for more I don't think I want to um I think hundred and thirty is an awful lot but um I don't really want to sell him or her anyway because I think they look really nice together but yeah so that's a breakdown of costs for you and why these needle felted items just cost so much that was the wool I used, which um, is beautiful stuff. But yeah, um, it does cost quite a bit. But also I forgot to say, which my friend Ganita always mentions to me, is I haven't even included taxes in that. Um, so 20% of some of my earnings will be taxed too. So you can see how that 130 and then split it up into the hourly rate. It, you're not earning tons of money, really. You're doing okay. And you're getting paid, but, you know, you're definitely not um, overpricing items.
So I made that sheep with that wool and then I had some of it left so I've made a couple of extras. This one is really sweet. I'm really pleased with that one. This one's just a little bauble. Um, and then that was a mini one I did a, a while ago but it kind of goes with them. And then I used up this wool and did a bauble out of that one. Just trying to, you know, use all the wool up but that one's really nice. It's all long and fluffy so yeah really pleased with that little little one but it's difficult because you can't charge much because they're quite small but it took me a, a short while to do so there we go little sheep collection so happy Wednesday I always try to get a shot where you could see me felting at the same time but my camera doesn't quite cover it <laughs> I don't think you can see it I've just started this hut looks like nothing, doesn't it? This Highland cow it is amazing. Everything starts looking like that. So I'm going to try and do one similar to that, but a bit bigger. So I did that one last month. So my tax went in. Um, my turnover was 27,000 last year, profit 15. So part-time business, really, you know, I'm really pleased, really happy. So I think that's roughly what the figures are going to be. Um, I'm, I'm not one to sort of, I haven't got like huge aims that I want to do. I want to make some money with this business um, and enjoy it still. So, but it looks like at 15,000, that would be 1,250 a month, which is, kind of, that was kind of my target. I can't see how I can um, improve on it tons more um, without having to do a lot more hours. Cause right now it's so part-time, but my daughter's going to college in September. Hopefully my son will be at university. I still have the dogs, but I should have technically more free time, so that would be amazing. So yeah, really happy with that and happy that my tax is in. I don't know how much exactly I've got to pay yet, um, but I don't know whether I'll keep the accountants either. Like I said, I think I might consider doing it. If, if the figures aren't too far out, I might consider doing it myself until everything gets digit until we have to put tax in every three months and that'll be in three years time but who knows they might move that date again so anyway we'll see um, I just wanted to show you this as well I collected a fleece yesterday off a lady who has got grey faced Dartmoor sheep she's got about six of them and I've got a whole fleece um, off her she knows me from Yummy Yorkshire and wondered if I wanted to use it and it's great um, but it's literally it's probably going to be um if I did a sheep's head, I could use it around the edge of that. Or if I did a, a life-size sheep or a three-quarter size sheep. I don't think life-size is practical. <laughs> um, but a quite large sheep. I would love to have a feature on my stand so it would work. But it does still smell even though I've washed it quite a few times. So from the point of view of selling, I probably wouldn't want to. But yeah. Very unusual fleece. Normally it's used for carpet making apparently, but um, yeah, really kind of her to think of me. I have got tons, too much fleece, but yeah, it's, I couldn't say no to it. So yeah, this is going to be a fun one to do in the future. It's the next day and I am just getting on with the head for this one. So I don't know if I said it before, but I'm doing a making of because I think they're quite, I did the making of pebbles which was a dog that I did and it was a really relaxing nice video so I'm going to do uh, the making of this Highland cow um, and people can kind of it's not a tutorial but you can get the idea of how to make it yourself you know it's you can see quite a bit of it um, my shoulder has come back so I had um, an injury called Costo chondritis a long time ago if you haven't followed my vlogs and it's just an injury to the muscles here from a repetitive strain from really weirdly from turning that hand not from the stabbing and um so I had it all treated by a remedial massage lady up till December and that was really good um and then I didn't go for January February March April I kind of felt I was all right which is the wrong thing to do you know you should be going I got one of those mats that you lie on that's got the needles in it and you know that's a really good pain relief for uh, when you have an aching shoulder or something aching um, so I really enjoyed lying on that so that was good but then it started to come back in April so I went back to her 
and yeah it's just really quite sore quite painful if I do too much so it keeps me in check it makes sure that I don't you know needle felt for too long so yeah I'm back at when you say massage it's not fun it's remedial and it's agony and that's part of the reason I didn't want to go back because it hurts quite a lot when she massages uh, parts of your body that aren't hurting it doesn't hurt but when she massages bits that have the knots in the injuries or whatever it really hurts so I really don't enjoy it at all um but I'm back there so I have to do it this I've ordered is something uh, a tutorial for next month and I'm really excited it's only little but I'm really excited about it this is the perfect color for what I wanted um, this is the outside of it, but let's see if you can guess what it's going to be <laughs> with that colour. There was something else I wanted to talk to you about. So I have mentioned that I thought I'd got into Home Fair Thought Week, and I think I definitely have, because it says it, I've sent off the titles of my pieces and you get a little label. Um, yeah, just to sort of let you know, if you were thinking of doing something like that, 20% is going towards a charity of, of the sale price, and then I paid £20 to enter anyway. Um, and I can only enter two things at, at this year unless you're an in, invited artist I can only enter two things but so I will be going and it's at the end of June I think it is but hopefully Zoe Stainton will be going with her amazing sculptures so I'll definitely get some footage of those so that will be good yeah I just wanted to discuss with you my Etsy shop has been a little bit quieter at the moment it's been over 300 sales in the last month so it's the 26 so 330 odd so it's absolutely fine i'm you know i'm really happy with it but everybody's shops are quiet at this time of year i do know that catnip who i follow she sells stickers and things but it's, i follow her because of her business acumen she's just like it's fantastic to see what she's doing she did a launch and she got over 400 orders so it just proves there are people out there still spending but um yeah etsy's all everything's a bit quieter at the moment and i kind of really enjoy it i'm really fortunate to be in a position where i do have lots of things on the go so i still bring in a certain amount of money and i'm not you know i am putting a lot towards the family um money but it's not if i if i made only 300 pounds it's not the end of the world we'd have to tighten our belts obviously but it's not you know it's not the end of the world and when I make more it's a real luxury you know it's really fantastic but yeah Etsy's quiet all round at this time of year and it happened last year um trying to think I wasn't selling much the year before so I wouldn't say I would know but it's quite normal and just to not be worried about it and don't suddenly panic and re reduce your prices if you've got an Etsy shop it's okay things will start to slowly get better in time here's the um, lying down Highland Cow all done with clay horns and hooves so that video went out and I'm, I'm really happy with it um, so yeah got lots of things on the shelves really should put a couple of more items on Etsy just cleaning my desk so I bought this um, new microphone because my new phone, the microphone doesn't plug in, which is just so typical. Um, and this is the quality of me doing a voiceover without it. And now I'll just show you the quality when I am using the microphone. And then here's my voice using it. It's very sensitive. I've got the microphone put about two feet away from me. So that's really good But because I do so many voiceovers. Um, I had to get a good one and occasionally the, the voiceover just wasn't clear um, so yeah I've got a new microphone so I've been testing that out so hopefully the quality is a little bit better. So Felters it's the end of the month so I'm going to wrap up this studio vlog here just a couple of things to mention that yeah, I definitely will be doing my rabbit kit I know but I like to do things if I feel inspired to do something like I wanted to try out my new carder so I wanted to do um, another Highland Cow. I've also done another little tiny project. That's for next month. So I feel if there's inspiration there, you ought to go and do what you really want to make. Um, so I'll do the rabbit kit next. That has to be done. Something that I've been thinking about with regards to, there's lots of things I feel I should be doing. I feel I should be doing workshops because I like to help beginners. But I don't really, I'm not really ready or wanting to do workshops right now. So something I was thinking of as an alternative, because I did Patreon and I tried it and I loved 
the community of people, but I didn't like all the extra little bits of work that it's involved. Um, but maybe having a meet and felt uh, for the first Saturday of every month or something like that in my local area, which I live in Holmfirth in the Holm Valley, which is at the top of the Peak District. I used to go, sorry, I've got a bit of a cold. I used to go to um, a wool um, knit and natter sort of type thing and there were four of us that were felters and it was just lovely to sit and felt with other people. I still remember that feeling of sitting and felting with other people so I'm thinking about that. I won't start till September, there's a coffee shop, Unity, the shop that I sold my items in, um, is perfect for that because it's got tea, coffee, parking and lots of things that you can browse and look at as well. So it's something I'm thinking about and it would just be really relaxed, you could just turn up beginner, advanced, whatever you are, and sit and chat to other felters and felt. So um, let me know your comments. Is that something you would like to, to go to? I know you wouldn't be able, not everybody's going to be able to come to this because of the location, but you could set up ones in your area. It's a thought. But is that something that you think people might be interested in? I normally sit here and say um, all the amazing things I've got next month, but you know what? I can't, I don't really know what I've got apart from doing the rabbit kit there will be lots that I have to get on with I have a huge list but um, don't worry there will be felting next month so <laughs> thank you for being here and have a wonderful month and we'll see you again soon take care before you go this is editing Philippa I forgot to mention Lion Gate Farm they are putting out some amazing um, YouTube uh, tutorials so do go and have a look um, I really love her, the lady's display at the beginning when you see all the sheep behind her and everything. So definitely go and have a look there. And one of my subscribers has ordered some wool from them. I believe they are based in the US. But my subscriber said that the wool was really, really good and at a very good price. Definitely worth looking at Liongate Farm. Thanks. See you soon.